Hi, hi, everybody. So I'm obviously not at home. I'm filming a bunch of workouts right now in a studio, but I'm just kind of like exporting some of the footage. So I figured while we're waiting, let's chat a little bit about workouts. I'm gonna get something to sit on. Oh. Oh, that's lovely. So specifically, I actually want to take a few minutes and talk about how our society presents working out to us. Because I personally think that they do it in the wrong way. Let's kind of break this up into chunks so it doesn't just become like word vomit. One of the biggest things I see is talk about calorie burn during your workouts. I talked a lot about this during Vlogmas, but promoting a workout based on how many calories you say it's going to burn, or honestly even just like worrying about how many calories you're going to burn during a workout, is kind of pointless. First of all, these things are have been proven to be pretty inaccurate. Last weekend, I was in a very bumpy car ride for three hours and I hit my stand goal every time, which is like get 250 steps each hour. I wasn't I wasn't standing. Now, aside from just that anecdotal evidence, there are a lot of studies that have been done over the years with these trackers. And while they are getting more accurate, they're still not super accurate when it comes to steps, heart rate, calories burned, etc. I think they're an excellent tool to gauge and estimate, but especially with calorie burn, I really don't think you need to worry about it during your workouts. And here's the other reason why. The number of calories that we burn during our workouts simply is not as significant as people present it to be. It honestly just depends on so many different factors, the intensity, the duration, your body size. And if we look at our TDEE or total daily energy expenditure, our EAT or exercise activity thermogenesis is just not really a huge chunk of the pie. What I would recommend focusing on more is that resting metabolic rate, which for most people is going to be like 75% of the energy exerted during the day. I've made a lot of videos talking about that before, so you can definitely just search my name and TDEE and stuff will pop up. You know, something else I started to notice, especially during Vlogmas, when I was just looking at so many different online workouts, I really think that this idea of like using a workout just to burn calories does kind of get tied to like crappy warm ups or omitted warm ups because I feel like the energy is very like, all right, let's do this one thing, get it over with really quick so we can get to the thing that matters, which is burning the calories and sweating. Like, that's just the energy that it gives me. And a number of people pointed out in the comments too in a lot of my Vlogmas videos where I did talk about like omitted or kind of like lackluster warmups. People were saying like, oh, well, you know, people don't really want the warm up. They just want to get to like the stuff that burns calories. And I just wish that more coaches would take the time to educate people because people are smart. Take that time to educate people on like why this is important to do. So if you do have a goal to burn a lot of calories for whatever reason, like honestly, I think the main reason would be like a fat loss goal. Here are the things that I would recommend focusing on rather than just focusing on the calories you burn during your workout. Making sure your sleep is on point. This is going to be so much more important than you realize. I've made a number of videos on sleep, so you can go check those out if you would like more information. Nutrition. The easiest way to get yourself into a caloric deficit is by adjusting your nutrition and your NEAT or your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. This is going to be how much movement you do during the day. Because if we think about our workout during the day, maybe it's 30 to 60 minutes of our daily movement right? What are you doing the rest of the day? What are you doing those other 23 hours? That is the chunk that matters when you zoom out. Don't get me wrong. Workouts, strength training, super important for your long-term health. I'm not saying there aren't benefits there. Just remember, and this is where society gets us, working out is not only done to burn calories. Who would have thought? So another one of the things that I've noticed a lot on social media is this idea that like our workout is always a burden. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but I've, I've seen videos of people like doing a workout or walking on the Stairmaster or the treadmill or something. And there's like text on top. that's like realizing I have to do this every single day just to stay mid-size. How terrible is that? And like, Oh, I hate that mindset. It makes me so sad that society has like instilled such unachievable beauty standards into us <laughs> that we have to think of movement as like a punishment or like a burden. One of my big goals is to show you or help to show you different modalities and different types of movement and hopefully getting you to find one that you enjoy or at least can enjoy enough to like stick to it because that movement is going to improve your health so, so much, especially zooming out, looking down the road. I also want to like pause here for a second and realize as I'm talking about like people living in mid-sized bodies or bigger sized bodies or whatever, like I realize I live in a smaller body. I've always lived in a smaller body. My weight has fluctuated, but in our society, I've always been deemed a smaller person and I definitely reap a lot of benefits from that. So I don't want you thinking he that I'm sitting here being like, oh, these people who are 
bigger body than me should just be happy. Like, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that I think it's a shame that we have been told so often to view movement as a burden. So if you think that that's where you are, you you find that movement, your workouts, it's always a burden. I want to give you a little food for thought or just some things to, to think about. First and foremost, I'm going to challenge you to find movement that you enjoy. Don't think about what's most optimal. Don't think about what's the most efficient. Don't think about what people are telling you to do. Find something you enjoy. Yes, ideally we should do strength training to preserve our muscle mass and our bone density. Yes, we should be doing cardio to preserve our heart health, but like, let's not go there yet. Let's find something we enjoy first. We'll tick those boxes when we get to it. Find something that's fun. Swimming, pickleball, going on walks with a friend. I don't care what it is, but my first big piece of advice to you is to repair your relationship with movement because if you come from it all the time, looking at it as a burden, you're not going to be able to find something sustainable. Now, am I saying it's always going to be easy to do? No. But the goal is to make sure that it doesn't always feel like a burden. Now, once you have that down, then I'm going to encourage sprinkling in some of the stuff that's missing. Let's say the thing that you found you really enjoy is hiking. Amazing. Can we get some strength work in there to help support the hiking that we're doing? Working on our single leg strength, working on our stability. Can we get in a little bit of mobility work to help strengthen those joints? That's just one example, but like zooming out, looking at what you're missing now in terms of those basic checkpoints and kind of sprinkling those in as you can. The quicker you realize that movement enhances your life, the easier it's going to be to stick to something. And that kind of leads me into my last broad topic that I want to discuss, especially because right now as I'm filming this, it is like early January. You see a lot of this marketing around going ghost mode, which honestly just always makes me think of like Casper and how ridiculous that movie was. Does anyone remember that movie, Casper the Ghost? So what is, like, let's break this down, ghost mode. So like you you become a ghost, you become Casper, you disappear, you give up everything in your life to commit to your fitness routine to get the body of your dreams and then... That's it. Not only is this so unrealistic, it's also really privileged if you think about it. Yes, there are people who can wake up at 4 a.m., get in their workout, get the kids out of bed, make them their lunches, drop them off at school, go work their nine to five, go pick up the kids, feed them, put them to bed, do their walking pad workout, and then go to bed and do it all again. That's amazing. Not everybody can do that. There's also people, most of the people saying go ghost mode are people who like literally do this for a living. Their job is to either influence you or do coaching. So it's much easier to fit it into their schedule. For me, it is much easier to fit movement into my schedule because I don't work a typical nine to five. I live in a very walkable city and I don't have children. So if I'm sitting here just saying like, yeah, just, you know, give up everything and go do it. How is that good advice? How is that motivating? I do think it is a shame that our society in the U.S. is not set up in a way to promote healthy long-term habits. That's a topic for a different video. But anyway, let's, let's go back to this idea of ghost mode. I don't like this ghost mode mindset because it implies that you have to give up everything you enjoy to reach your goals, whatever they may be. So let's think of it this way instead. Let's look at things that you enjoy during your day that you do for you, and maybe we can reframe it. One quick example off the top of my head, maybe at the end of the night after you put the kids down, you've done the dishes, you like to sit on the couch with your partner and watch TV. Well, can you carve out some of that time to sit on the floor, watch TV, and do your mobility work? Or maybe every time there's a commercial, you sit down and do some mobility work. Maybe you have a walking pad at home and you're walking while you're doing this for a bit. That's just one thing that pops into my head. But again, instead of thinking of stripping things out of your life, let's think about adding in and stacking things together. There are just so many doors that training opens up to you rather than closes. And unfortunately, so much of the marketing done to us is like, you have to give up everything. And I don't think that you have to. If fitness does not add to your life, unfortunately, you're not going about it in a sustainable way. And that is my pep talk for the day. I think my footage is done uploading. So we're going to get back to filming. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think. This was just kind of new year, new year, new me thinking as I see all of this crap on social media. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.